Hi everybody, so this is all about synapses and how nerve impulses are able to travel across a synapse. Okay, so uh, what's the function of a synapse? So first of all, the synapse is the gap between two neurons. So this gap here is a synaptic cleft. It's about 20 nanometers wide, so it's a super tiny gap. Um, the function of a synapse is firstly to make sure that the impulse which is traveling in this direction continues across the synapse and carries on going in the same way. So because of the structure of the synapse and how it works, the impulse is not able to come back the other way. Okay, So this cannot happen. So the first function of the synapse is to ensure one-way direction of travel for the impulse. And the second thing, um, if we think about the end of a neuron, so this um, could be any neuron, so we've got our terminal branches here. Each of those terminal branches connects to um, another axon, and each of these could be separate neurons entirely. And if these are separate neurons, that means that they could um, lead off to completely different parts of the body. So basically what you can have is an impulse in one neuron, then having an effect um, on lots of other neurons, and that can just basically um, increase the number of possibilities in terms of pathways and um, responses that can take place as a result of a stimulus. The other thing we can have, if we think about um, a motor neuron, and the fact that the motor neuron has um, all of these dendrites, and each of these dendrite endings is going to have a synapse with um, another neuron. So it's kind of similar to what we saw over here, but the other way around. So if we just make that a little bit more diagrammatic, each of these is a dendrite, and we've got information this time coming in from lots of different neurons. So again, this is this idea, in this case, it's the idea of integration. So information from lots of different neuron pathways um, can be integrated um, into one neuron. Whereas here we've got the information from one neuron which can be sent out to lots of different neurons. So both of these ideas, um, which occur because of the idea, because of the synapse, mean that there are just more pathways. It makes it much, uh, much more versatile in terms of how impulses are sent around the body. It's also, as a result, thought that the synapses are involved in our memory and our learning. So when we are learning new things, um, new synapses form between neurons. It's not fully understood how that happens or how it works, um, but we know that new synapses between neurons do form during learning. So let's have a look at what happens and how it happens. So here we've got our um, two neurons. This neuron here is our postsynaptic neuron, so the impulse is going to come travel in this direction. And on this postsynaptic membrane, we have um, iron channels, and as you can see, they are gated. In the presynaptic neuron, we've got neurotransmitters. This neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. Now, there are lots of different kinds of neurotransmitter, um, and you get different neurotransmitters in different neurons, um, and they may work slightly differently. But the one that we are going to look at is acetylcholine, or ACH. So these vesicles that are here in our um, presynaptic membrane, um, they will get triggered when calcium enters the neuron. So we've got a very high concentration of calcium outside the neurons and a very low concentration inside. Now at the moment, this voltage-gated calcium channel is closed. When an action potential travels down, so here you can see this, uh, this is the action potential, so this is the membrane um, being depolarized um, to about, my, about plus 30, plus 40 millivolts, that triggers the opening of our calcium channels. So calcium moves into the neuron, and the presence of calcium inside the neuron in the, uh, this part here is called the synaptic knob. That presence of calcium makes the vesicles move to the cell surface membrane and fuse. And then exocytosis, and the neurotransmitter moves out into the synaptic cleft. And now you've obviously got a lot of neurotransmitter 
near the presynaptic neuron and you haven't got any neurotransmitter near the postsynaptic neuron, so you've got a concentration gradient, which means that the neurotransmitter diffuses across the synaptic cleft. When it gets there, it binds onto these channels. So these um, gated channels, uh, they also have a, a part of them which acts as a receptor. So the neurotransmitter binds to the receptor on these channels and that causes them to open. So these are not voltage gated. It's not a change in voltage which makes them open. It's the presence of the neurotransmitter, which is a chemical. So these are chemically gated channels. And in this particular neuron here, um, the ACH, when it makes those channels open, um, we have then an influx of sodium ions. So the sodium ions, which are in the synaptic cleft, they're going to move down their concentration gradient, so they're going to diffuse in by facilitated diffusion into our postsynaptic neuron. Now, of course, we know that when sodium ions move into a cell, they depolarize the membrane. So this influx of sodium ions depolarizes the membrane. And if enough sodium enters, it will trigger an action potential. So the action potential now travels down the membrane of the postsynaptic neuron. So initially, the action potential came down here in the presynaptic neuron. And now there's been a movement of chemicals across the synaptic cleft. And then, depending on the size and how everything works, you can then get an action potential here as well. OK, so if we um, start from this position here then, so the action potential has been generated. Now, acetylcholine is at the moment bound still to these uh, gates. As long as it's bound, those gates will stay open, which means that sodium will continue to move in, which means that this action potential will just continue to be generated. OK, we'll just have a constant stream of action potentials which means basically that um, it's as if there was a very, very strong stimulus. So really high frequency of action potentials all the time. The brain interprets action potentials. So if you've got a constant stream of action potentials, the brain is going to be interpreting that in terms of whatever stimulus it might have been initiating it in the first place. Um, it could result, if, if the end result of this action potential is a muscle contracting, then a constant stream of action potentials mean that the muscles stay contracted and will never relax. And that's obviously a problem. So we need to stop this action potential. And the only way that can happen is by removing the acetylcholine, which is bound here. And that's where acetylcholine esterase comes in. So this is an enzyme, and the enzyme takes acetylcholine and it catalyzes a breakdown into acetate and choline molecules. I'm just using these symbols to represent those two molecules. So what we can see is that the acetylcholine gets broken down. And because it's now a different shape, it's not complementary to the shape of the receptor, which means that they release from the receptor. And as soon as they release, the gates close. We've now again got a concentration gradient, which means that the acetate and the choline Oh, sorry, the other thing is because those gates have closed, the action potential now stops. So the acetate and choline will diffuse back across the synaptic cleft. And once they're there, they get taken back into the presynaptic neuron by endocytosis. Choline and acet acetyl coenzyme A join together to make acetylcholine again because we don't want to waste these molecules. We need a constant, you know, these, these vesicles in the presynaptic membrane, they need to always have neurotransmitter in them, so we need to, uh, the body needs to keep making acetylcholine. So the choline, it doesn't join straight with acetate. The acetate is used um, as a precursor to make acetyl coenzyme A. So the acetate helps to make this. The choline joins to acetyl coenzyme A, and you get your acetylcholine back again. So now you have neurotransmitters inside your vesicles ready for the next impulse to come down the presynaptic neuron. Okay, that's it.